In this episode, we're going to paint up these three Stonecast tunnels for the brand new Shakespeare. So how about that? Um, for the sake of this video, we'll be focusing on the bus man, who uh, is uh, suspiciously close to being uh, that guy Garen from League of Legends. Um, and um, to, th to make sure that the paints go on uh, smooth and nice, I have turned this old um, Citadel sand box into a wet palette and uh, you can check my video on how to make a wet palette if you don't know what that is. But it now appears like this. There is some wet paper towel and some parchment paper over and this ensures that the paint doesn't dry on the palette. It's really a nice and easy tool to, uh, to make. So throughout this video I'm going to uh, apply a series of colors and as you might be able to see here in the background most of the colors I have are in twos. So two shades of gold, two shades of silver, two shades of brown. Um, if you're new to painting or if you just uh, want some color on these miniatures, say if you're a board gamer for instance, you can skip the whole highlighting uh, thing and just plug out the core color. And then when we get to shading, which is uh, to say when we uh, add shadows using very thin paint, I suggest you just take a brown shade, either this from uh, Citadel or Amber shade from Vallejo, and paint the entire miniature with it instead of only shading one area at the time. Um, but yeah, the first thing I want to do, since these guys are wearing a lot of gold, is that I want to take glorious gold, give it a good shake and put it on the wet palette, and then start to plug in uh, all the armor plates. Next, uh, I want to pin in the skin of uh, this dude's face, and uh, for that, I'll pick natural flesh, uh, natural flesh, and uh, well, basically any flesh shade you uh, got your hands on will do for this. It is the only part of skin shown across the entire team. And as soon as the skin is dry, I'm gonna wash the entire model with the Reikland Flesh Shade. Um, so all the gold as well as his face. And it's usually a good idea when washing to uh, fasten the paint pot to your work surface with a bit of poster putty, just to avoid it from tipping over. And be sure that the wash is completely dry before you continue. Now that the wash is dry, I'm gonna hit the gold with a dry brush first of the original Glorious Gold. And then after that, some polished gold to build it up. And I won't be putting the paint in the wet palette this time around because, well, I need it to be dry.
I'll take some gun metal, and that is for the sword blade and the scale mill at front, and uh, a few other metallic doodads here and there. Once the metallic has dried, I'll grab some Nolan oil, this is a black wash, and wash the newly painted silver details with it. While I'm waiting for the wash to dry, I'm gonna grab some mechanical standard grey and paint all the rocks on his base. And while we're there, um, we'll take some null screen. Um, this can easily be replaced by Vallejo's dark green or uh, Citadel Caliban green. And we'll paint in the area around the, the rocks he's standing on. Now, for a bit more dry brushing, I'm going to take some chainmail silver, and this will be for all the metallics, so the the blade as well as the armor, um, and this is the final highlight for those elements. With the dry brush done, I'll take some Agrix Earth Shade and uh, give the base a wash. And I'm using this straight out of the pad. Oh, also, I painted some sandry dust on the little skull on his base. Next, I'm gonna take some uh, Valley Hope Black, any black will do. And uh, this is for his hair, and any areas where there is uh, some room in between the armor plates. There's not a lot of that on this guy, but on the other two there are a few areas. Now we're ready to add some white, and on this guy that'll just be for the inside of the cloak, but on the other two there are some uh, some scrolls hanging from them, and. Uh, and also, uh, because they don't have uh, cloaks on, you can see the backside of their uh, loincloth. So that'll be white too. And for white, I'm gonna start with the uh, Menoth white base, which is a bone or eggshell color. Then I'll highlight it with Menoth white highlight. And finally, I'm gonna just take the sharpest edges with some pure white from Reaper. And again, this can be easily replaced by colors you have or have access to. And without further ado, I'm going to continue to the highlight color. And this is basically for all the white areas, just not the deepest recesses. and the pure white. <clears throat> so, I also hit his uh, shoulder with a bit of pure white, um, just for the icon. I'll paint blue and rounded, but it is, uh, I find it easier to paint the little spindly detail first and then fill in around it rather than trying to paint it around and not hit the blue. Anyway, before we go into the blue, I'll take some chocolate brown and this is for the leather bits such as uh, the, what do we call it, uh, the skirt thingy. Uh, they all have 
hand front and the belt they have around their waist. Also the strap holding his amulet. Next, I'll highlight the brown using flat earth, and this is just uh, basically painting the tips of the the doodads hanging from the belt. Now uh, to paint in some red, and this is for the grip of the weapons as well as the plume on his helmet. And for that, I'm going to use scorn red. Next up, the areas that I want to be blue, so that'll be uh, the outside of the cloggy thingy, battle skirt, um, the trim on the loincloth, and uh, the shoulder pad with the marking on it. And for that, I'll use some Kaldor Sky, um, but again, that is just because it's the first dark blue that caught my attention. Now that the blue and red have been applied, I'm ready to do some more shading. Now I'm gonna hit the red and the brown areas with Acrax Earth Shade, and after that, I'm gonna hit the blue areas with no Oil. The wash is almost completely dry, but before we go back to the red and the blue, I want to finish off the base. And for that, I'm going to take some Terminatus stone. Um, the label fell off this one, but it's dry compound from Citadel. And dry brush all over the base to, uh, to bring it together, so to say. And after that, I'm gonna paint the base trim black, just to make the model stand out more. <clears throat> now, to finish off the blue color, I'm gonna go back to Kaldor Sky, and uh, just re-establish uh, the color so that it looks clean, not painting uh, in the recesses where it settled. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of Fenrician Grey, just for the sharpest details. And finally, to highlight the red, I'm gonna work through a Kato red base, followed by a Kato red highlight. And after that, I'll bring his skin tone up a little bit with uh, some more neutral flush as used earlier 
and then I'll highlight the hair with a little more Terminator stone. And here they are, painted to what I would say is a decent tabletop standard. This is uh, not the fastest way, um, but perhaps one of the easiest ways to, uh, to get them on the table. But as I said in the beginning, you can also just plug in the core colors and give them an all over shade and not an all over dry brush. Which is what we're going to do in the next video with the corn guys here. So. Um, Tune in for that and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any uh, tutorials or battle reports. We are going to do a lot of shades by content. And uh, yeah, check back in soon for when, uh, when we're painting up these guys super fast Aaron style. Um, so yeah, on that, not much else to say than uh, take care and uh, bye bye.